I thought I'd better say something and making sure the people who are a part of this ministry understand what God says about this. Because it's important that we get um, our worldview from Scripture, and not from, uh, you know, the lunch table and the break room. But we need to get it uh, from the word of God, the man of God, and, and basically <laughs> the things of God. Our ideas and our thoughts need to be godly. I want to do something uh, as something I talked about years ago. Um, um, and I want you to see this video real quick. It's only two or three minutes. But I want to make a point from this video. Uh, let me know when you got it ready to cue video number one. All right. Let's let's roll that video real quick. Um, and let's show that video. Historically, no culture has ever reversed a 1.9 fertility rate. A rate of 1.3? Impossible to reverse. Because it would take 80 to 100 years to correct a state. And there is no economic model that can sustain a culture during that time. In other words, if two sets of parents each have one child, there are half as many children as parents. If those children have one child, then there are one-fourth as many grandchildren as grandparents. If only a million babies are born in 2006, it's hard to have two million adults enter the workforce in 2026. As the population shrinks, so does the culture. As of 2007, the fertility rate in France was 1.8, England, 1.6, Greece, 1.3, Germany, 1.3. Italy, 1.2. Spain, 1.1. Across the entire European Union of 31 countries, the fertility is a mere 1.38. Historical research tells us these numbers are impossible to reverse. In a matter of years, Europe as we know it will cease to exist. Yet the population of Europe is not declining. Why? Immigration. Islamic immigration. Of all population growth in Europe since 1990, 90% has been Islamic immigration. France, 1.8 children per family. Muslims, 8.1. In southern France, traditionally one of the most populated church regions in the world, there are now more mosques than churches. 30% of children ages 20 and younger are Islamic. In the larger cities, such as Nice, Marseille, and Paris, that number has grown to 45%. By 2027, one in five Frenchmen will be Muslim. In just 39 years, France will be an Islamic republic. In the last 30 years, the Muslim population of Great Britain rose from 82,000 to 2.5 million, a 30-fold increase. There are over 1,000 mosques, many of them former churches. In the Netherlands, 50% of all newborns are Muslim, and in only 15 years, half of the population of the Netherlands will be Muslim. In Russia, there are over 23 million Muslims. That's one out of five Russians. Forty percent of the entire Russian army will be Islamic in just a few short
fourth week. Currently in Belgium, 25% of the population and 50% of all newborns are Muslim. The government of Belgium has stated one third of all European children will be born to Muslim families by 2025, just 17 years away. The German government, the first to talk about this publicly, recently released a statement saying, the fall in the German population can no longer be stopped. Its downward spiral is no longer reversible. It will be a Muslim state by the year 2050. Muammar al-Qaddafi of Libya said, there are signs that Allah will grant victory to Islam in Europe without swords, without guns, without conflict. We don't need terrorists. We don't need homicide bombers. The 50 plus million Muslims in Europe will turn it into a Muslim continent within a few decades. There are currently 52 million Muslims in Europe. The German government said that number is expected to double in the next 20 years to 104 million. Closer to home, the numbers tell a similar story. Right now, Canada's fertility rate is 1.6, nearly a full point below what is required to sustain a culture. And Islam is now the fastest growing religion. Between 2001 and 2006, Canada's population increased by 1.6 million, 1.2 of those immigration. In the United States, the current fertility rate of American citizens is 1.6. With the influx of the Latino nations, the rate increases to 2.11, the bare minimum required to sustain a culture. In 1970, there were 100,000 Muslims in America. Today, there are over 9 million. The world is changing. It's time to wake up. Three years ago, a meeting of 24 Islamic organizations was held in Chicago. The transcripts of that meeting showed in detail their plan to evangelize America through journalism, politics, education, and more. They said, we must prepare ourselves for the reality that in 30 years, there will be 50 million Muslims living in America. The world that we live in is not the world in which our children and grandchildren will live. The Catholic Church recently reported that Islam has just surpassed their membership numbers. Some studies show that at Islam's current rate of growth, in five to seven years, it will be the dominant religion of the world. As believers, we call upon you to join the effort to share the gospel message with the changing world. This is a call to action. I, I show that uh, video for a reason. And the reason is in the backdrop of what's going on in America and what's going on in America and what's going on in the Western world. Um, you see, I saw that comment by Muammar Gaddafi and we want to give credit uh, to the organization that put that together. I thought it was well done. Understand it's old. Understand that's been out there for a while. And Muammar Gaddafi, when he said that, it was so ingenious that, that, that Islam would take over or Muslims would take over Europe. This is a movie I showed several times called The Rape of Europe. Um, um, David Hathaway narrates this documentary, and it really kind of lays out the very same thing. Uh, but notice what we're doing. One, we're living in a very materialistic world where we don't value life, but we value things. So we don't have time to have children. We, we don't, we get, the, 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 the commandment was what? Be what? Be fruitful and to multiply. One of the things that we find ourselves is this is not a altogether negative thing. What we have to do is be bold to evangelize the gospel. A Muslim can, can become a Christian, but you have to be willing and be bold 
to evangelize the gospel. But one of the things that I wanted to do was just look at the book of Psalms today. I'm going to look at Psalms 106. We'll go there just shortly if you can find it. Um, you know, the book of Psalms is kind of raw. It's kind of like, you know, Psalms can give you a word picture uh, just as raw as any thing you would watch on YouTube or DVD. It can be very raw. And, 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 and the point is, there are some sins that you, 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 you can't be, you can't even comprehend unless you see the, the rawness of it. And one of those things is abortion. I believe that the church and Christians don't really have an idea of what abortion is. <clears throat> when we say things like partial birth abortion, most people have no clue what that is. Or when we talk about legislatures or Christians come to the agreement that, well, you know, 15 weeks. Well, we don't even know, have a clue what a 15-week baby is capable of when a heartbeat happens at six weeks. So if a heartbeat can happen at six weeks and you sign a death certificate when a heart stops, it would seem to me, why are we even talking 15 weeks? The minimum you should be talking it's six weeks. But I believe, like many other Christians believe, that life begins at conception. Life begins, according to the word of God, uh, well before conception, but in his heart, the Bible says. You know, and God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knew you. And so I think it's important that we do that. But if we were made to sit down, and to watch a video that showed an abortion, I believe it would change your mind. I'm not going to be grotesque today, but I'm going to show you something. Uh, again, I give credit to uh, the Christian organization that put this video together. We're going to look at it, and then we're going to juxtapose that, and we're going to look at Psalms 106, and I think we will, we will understand something better. If I can get you to play that second video, again, we give credit. Uh, to the organization that put this together. And it'll be showing up on the board the whole time. The next thing we're going to talk about is what's called a partial birth abortion. If we can't get the nation and our legislature to understand what's really going on here, we're never going to have any kind of an impact. Partial birth abortion can be performed at any gestational age, okay? You know, we talked about Roe versus Wade and all the things that came into that. You know, there are so many things that, when you think, you know, you can do this procedure if mom's health is in jeopardy, you think, well, you know, I guess if we don't, if we don't do this, mom dies, that means her health. Health is defined as physical, emotional, psychological, age, familial, so just about anything, too young, too old, anxious, depressed, any of these things can be considered health and have these procedures be performed. But with a partial birth abortion, the baby is there up on the inside, and the baby is alive. All right. They will then use an instrument, they dilate the cervix, sometimes it takes a couple of days to open up the cervix enough in order to deliver the baby. And this can be done at any gestational age. But what's done is then the baby's foot is grabbed up from the inside and it's brought back down. All right. So we're essentially delivering this baby breech. All right. And when the first foot is brought down, the baby is still alive, they then reach up and they'll deliver the second foot and the second leg. Now they have a good grip on the baby, and baby's alive, and baby's you know, moving around. Then they'll put a little bit of traction on, they'll start to bring the baby down a little bit more, and as they're bringing the baby down more, the arms start to come into view, and they'll reach up with one finger, they'll grab the right arm, <coughs> they'll sweep it down, and they'll deliver the right arm. Then they'll rotate the baby around, and they'll deliver the left arm. Now at this point, 90% of the baby is on the outside. You know, the baby has already completely left the womb and is beyond the cervix, and it's just the baby's head that's sitting there still in the vagina. Legally, the baby is not born yet. All right? The baby hasn't taken its first breath. The baby's alive, moving, doing its thing while it's being held in the, in the doctor's hand. And I use the term doctor really loosely. But the baby's being held right there. But what they need to do now is they need to, you know, you know do the abortion procedure. They need to kill the baby. And the way they do that, it's one of the more common ways that they'll use a, a pair of scissors like this. Now, you remember from your biology class, 
Remember the foramen magnum, that hole in the base of the skull where your spinal cord comes down from the brain into the back and the spine? This scissor is then placed at the base of the baby's neck, at the base of the skull, and is forced up into the baby's skull, into the baby's brain cavity. And then the scissor you know, is opened up just like that to expose that area. If this doesn't kill the baby just by doing that, then the thing they can do is they can then take a suction curette, place it up into the hole they just made, up into the baby's brain, and then turn the suction machine on, just like it crushes a steel can. You can imagine what it does to the baby's brain up there on the inside. Once they've done that and they've killed the baby, which now, of course, stops moving, then they'll deliver the rest of the baby, you know, dead. But that's when you hear a partial birth abortion. You know, there's no way that that part of the procedure, when you, yes, there are some reasons where we need to deliver babies early. When moms are sick, and the only way we're going to get mom better is by delivering the babies early. But to deliver the legs, the belly, the chest, and both arms of this baby, and then kill the baby at that point, how does killing the baby at that last second protect the mom at all? It doesn't. You know, it's just a way of being able to justify, and somebody said, killing babies at any gestational age, whether it's the first trimester, the second trimester, or the third trimester. But that's what a partial birth abortion is. When it comes up in the news and it comes up, you know, in the legislature, that's what's really going on. Just picture that. I mean, babies that would do just fine. We have babies that do well at 23, 24, 25 weeks at our intensive care nursery, and we have great survivals. I mean, these are babies that are even further along than that, that all they need is just let the head come out, clamp the cord, cut the cord, let the baby go to the nursery. Okay? Those are first, second, and third trimester abortions. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. I think it's important that we, when we, um, when we hear, um, when we hear of an abortion, how many times, how many, for, for you, it's the first time you've ever seen anything like that? Okay, what a partial birth abortion is. You can find them live if you can stomach it on YouTube. I dare not show anything like that. I think that was good enough. But I'm convinced if we are making people see this, see, we don't understand what we're agreeing to. And you hear what he said, the, for the life of the mother for the health. Health could mean anything. Health is an ambiguous term. But you, you find what we find is people want to go to extremes. Like one preacher who says, I would, you know, uh, uh, somebody have to, why should a baby, a mother have to have a child? A girl have to have a child from her uncle or her daddy. That's a demon seed. You see how we jump to the extreme? We jump to an extreme, and who are these people? When you, when you look and you think about the number of people that have experienced that, it would be slim and none. You, you follow me what I'm saying? But we use that and hold that out as a reason to have and make abortion legal. But I love what Psalms says. Psalms 106 and 36 and 37, 38. It says, they served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood. The blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. I want you to see. I want you to see something here. There, 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 there are four parallels. Um, I believe with abortion that I want to touch on, and I just want to do this tonight so we can kind of move on. I'm putting it out here, so you know, the church can see and people who are following uh, can see. Uh, it, it is. It is really. Uh, it's really so important 
really in the backdrop of understanding that first video I showed you that we've got one group of people who cherishes life and we got another group of people who do who 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 we don't cherish life we don't appreciate life and we don't understand the value of life and life really um, we as humans are the image of God and we talked about that on Sunday that's one of the reasons I'm sure that it really it's an affront to God when we start aborting what is he has put in the earth realm to be his representative and image. You notice what the scriptures called it. Not me, not some right wing zealot, not pro-life groups. It's called sacrifice. It's called sacrifice. Look at verse 37. They sacrificed. That is a strong word because sacrifice means something very specific in scriptures. It really means something very uh, uh, specific uh, as it has to do with worship. They sacrificed their sons and they sacrificed their daughters. Sacrifice means that you give up something originally considered valuable. Remember, the bull, goat, and lamb, that was something valuable uh, in the day. And it was something that had blood. It was something that sustained life. It was something that was deemed valuable to that family uh, to gain something better, usually from a deity. Or from a God. And I can't think of, maybe jumping in front of myself a little bit, but I can't think of anything more valuable than your children, than your sons and your daughters to be specific. I, I, I don't know, I can't think of anything more precious. When we give, and when the Bible says, we bring the sacrifice of praise. In other words, something valuable we're doing, something, you know, it, it, like tonight. Some people couldn't sacrifice to come to Bible study because they worked all day. So then everybody else worked all day. But the point becomes it's a sacrifice. And see, and see unless it's a sacrifice, I don't think God wants it. Isn't it amazing? We will sacrifice to demons more than we will sacrifice to the living God. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Abortion, particularly in America, is done consciously with a desire to get blessings from a deity. What deity? But it is done, you know, it's not done to get a conscious thing from a deity. It's not. But it's done to gain something better. What's better than a baby? That's really what the whole, this whole debate's about. You think about it. Sacrifice in the Bible, they sacrifice to their gods. Remember Remember, you, 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 you know, you build your altar, Elijah says. Hmm? And the 40, 450 prophets of Baal, they build their altar. And they go back and forth. And he says now, the one that answers by fire, huh? let that one be God. You remember that? So you bring something of value and you offer that thing to a deity, your God. And the question becomes, is the gain greater than the loss? 
you don't sacrifice something unless something greater is coming. And my question, Jesus was sacrificed and something greater came. What, what was the greater that came? Our life, eternal life, was given. So he did what we couldn't do for anyone that would accept him. My question, as we sacrifice our children, what is on the backside and what is the return? You got to be sure that we see this whole idea of sacrifice in those terms. When you sacrifice something, you do it to get something greater and better in return. Think about that. The life of a child is being sacrificed for something. Think about it. The, the life of the child, it, you know, nothing happens in this earth by happenstance. You may not know what's going on, but there is a spiritual implication to what you do and do not do. That's why we pray and we ask God to forgive us of sins of omission and sins of commission. Because there are some things that we are ignorant to that we don't know we're tapping into. I mentioned on Sunday how what we're doing is feeding and creating and strengthening and demonizing or strengthening the demonization of a nation and nations by sacrificing our children. What that something is defines really the uh, barbarity of a culture, of a people of a society. Think about it, how barbaric it is for you to sacrifice your child. And it's, 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 it, it's, it's in some places commonplace. Some places we have not heard of such a thing. I had one of the Sri Lankan sisters say it happens in parts of India all the time still happening. But we are closed off from some of these Eastern religions and some of these things that happen in places we have no clue about in parts of Africa and parts of South America and the Caribbean. Some of these things we have no clue about. Well, we love to go and get in the beach and in the water, but we have no clue what's going on in the cultures of some of these places. It's got to be very difficult for a mother to be pregnant and have an unplanned pregnancy. And I, I'm, I'm not going to make light of it because I've known people, had loved ones who've gotten pregnant not in the in in the god ideal situation in marriage and it can create some difficult choices and i've seen some bizarre choices i've seen mothers abandon their babies but they had their babies they left their babies what we're having now in this generation and it really shouldn't be even though grandmothers are great don't get me wrong grandfathers are great i am one but I have no business raising a five-year-old. I don't have the strength or the stamina to deal with no 10-year-old. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 but, but, but God created young people to be able to do that. I, there's a role for me to play, but that's not the role in the day-to-day -day raising of a child, but we have our grandparents raising child. But praise the Lord for that because that child wasn't aborted. Amen. But that's not really our ideal for that child. The issue is how precious is a child? 
You know, how precious is a child? And the next question is, will we trust God to make a way? You know, what do you do when you face with it? I mentioned one of the comments that Barack Obama made concerning his two girls. And he made it very publicly that if my daughters made a mistake, and he said it very boldly and almost like he wasn't ashamed of it. If my daughters... Uh, get pregnant, I'm not going to, their life is not going to be ruined by that. My life, their lives are not going to be ruined by that. The question is, how do we trust God? This, this is what we as Christians really should be devoted to. We should be devoted, not only, uh, heartbeat uh, organizations like I'm sitting on the board of here in Germany and some of those all around the world that do crisis pregnancies and try to help um, mothers wrestle with the fact, look at that sonogram, see that child and say, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to take care of it. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to make it through this. I think hope has to come from the church. You know, we, we, we've got to be loving and have a love approach as we encounter these people. Because you, you understand, uh, when, when, a, when, a, when a young lady is pregnant, a girl is pregnant, and they're pregnant, the first thing, they don't know what to do. They don't know who to talk to. Uh, they, some can talk to their mothers and some can't talk to their mothers. And then you got the dynamic of mothers who are ashamed and, and that sort of thing. And uh, they'll try to maybe take you away and nobody will know. And But let me tell you somebody who knows. His name is Elroy. He's the all-seeing God. Uh, you know, his name is Jehovah Shammah. He's there. He's always present. And we can't run from that. We've got to be able to deal with it. And you know what's interesting? Uh, we always want to try to make our children uh, better than the next person's children. But you know what? The Bible says we all sin and we've fallen short of the glory of God. My question is, will you love your child if your child made a mistake? Would you love your child if your child was in sin? How much do you really love your child? Do you love your child enough to tell them the truth about the word of God? Notice number one in Psalms 106, they called it a sacrifice. And I wanted to make clear that, that sacrificing a child, abortion is nothing more than sacrificing a child to a deity. Not, you know, and, 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 and we can call it what we want to call it, but we got to call, as they would say in the world, let's call a spade a spade. No, that's not, see, we want to talk around stuff. You know, like they want to talk around the abortion thing. Let's call it partial. Per I showed you that film. And when you look at it, you see what it is. The leg is coming out. Then the other leg is coming out. Then the other arm is birthed. Then the other arm is birthed. The only thing is left in the vagina is the head. 90% of the baby's out of the body. Mom's okay. Baby's kicking. And then they take an instrument and either separate the brain stem, kill the baby instantly, or suck the baby's brain out. Lord, have mercy. And when you think about that, the kid was kicking in your hands. Peter will put you in jail if you kill the dog. They will come to your house if you kill a dog, you kill an eagle. You go into jail if you kill any other living thing. But a baby? We're going to make it legal to do that, but it's illegal to do. Oh, come on, man. What kind of world and wicked place are we living in? It doesn't make sense. You know, and, but we don't think about it because our preachers don't want to talk about this because we don't want to stand on it. Well, you know, what if somebody got raped? Well, come on, help me, James Robeson. James Robinson is one of the, a man, we did work with him 
in the and I had the unique privilege of being with him twice, or and then three times. What a wonderful man of God! We were in three different meetings together, and man, that guy he's a big giant man, big old hands, just a wonderful man. But he's a product of rape, and when you hear his story, and what God has done with him around, no, you, there never been one scandal around his name. He and Betty have been loving each other forever taking the gospel to the world huh and he's the product yeah and that one bishop called him a demon seed that shows you that it couldn't be a demon seed because the demon would be knocking and killing as many demons as he has my man of god dr dr philip godot he's also the product of rape And look what he's done. Ministries all over the world, written about 50 or 60 books, maybe 100. He's written so many books. God can bless you. You don't know what God has in store. How many Einsteins did we kill? How many? Come on now. Preachers and evangelists and brain surgeons and huh? every answer to the earth is in the earth. God puts every answer to every problem in scripture and he puts the, 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 the assistant in the earth. <laughs> We've been killing our assistants. I get in my car and every time I get in my cars, either one of them, and I pull, I noticed it today out of all this time, I just really paid attention because I'm, unless my wife's in the car, I'm not, I didn't notice it because she was in the car two days ago, three days ago. And there's this little beat that goes when I go out. And I have this little device, it's, it's called an oh no. And, and it tells you where road hazards are and that sort of thing. So as soon as I pull out of my gate, it goes doo -doo, and you read it and it says your co-driver is ready. When God puts you in the earth, man, you're the co-driver for some purpose on this earth. You're the co-driver. God, you, when you understand what your purpose is, the problem is we don't understand our purpose. So since we don't understand purpose, we can easily abort a child. Huh? We're sitting here looking for an answer that is right in our belly we're looking for an answer but we're aborting our answers we're aborting our solutions y'all better hear me what i'm saying god would not put nothing in this earth that he doesn't have need for Amen. you think it, it, it there's no need for it you 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 may think it has no need you you bring in a child that is handicapped you bring in a child that's severely handicapped or whatever, and one of the siblings become one of the greatest doctors that brings about the cure to that disease. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. The closer you are to something, the more you get involved in that something. And God does not make a mistake. He does not make a mistake. The second thing that Psalms does, it says, it, it, Psalms 106, first, I'm telling you it's sacrifice. Number two, this parallel I'm talking about, in Psalms 102, 106 and abortion, it says, and they are sons and daughters. Look, second, the child sacrificed in Psalm is described as a sacrifice. The child sacrificed in Psalms 106 is described as a sacrifice, watch now, of sons and daughters. Look at 37. They sacrificed, watch now, their sons and their daughters. He could have said they sacrificed their children. But he was specific by saying they sacrificed, but he said they sacrificed their sons and their daughters. This draws attention to two, two, two specific things. There's a sexual difference. Their sons and their daughters. They are little boys and little girls. They're family. You understand, you, you, this is not a fetus. And this is why I think 
that, that God is exposing the devil, man, live and in color on TV when the president of the United States had a microphone in his face and he said and he was trying to be, you know, trying to get a little energy because um, he no, no, normally don't have a lot. And he was trying to get a little energy and bold. And he said, hey, a mother should be able to, to, sac to, to, to abort their child. Ooh. A mother should be able to abort her child, is what he said. He didn't mean that. He meant to say what their common word is. They're trying to take this out. You notice they've taken this out of the lexicon now. Fetus, you know what a fetus is? If you look up the word fetus, it's really a living child. So, so they're getting that out of the dictionary now. You know, they change. When, when they lose the arguments, they always change the rules. So you, you, you're going to be flagged if you use the word fetus. But he went all the way, y'all. He didn't use fetus. He said, you got a right to abort your child. So you agree what we've been saying along all the time. You know it. You know what it is. God is going to expose the enemy for exactly who he is and what he's doing. So this baby being sacrificed, it's not only a child, it's a son, it's a daughter. Somebody shout, it's family. Amen. And so it is with abortion. When we abort, we are aborting sons and daughters. We are aborting, we are, did you, God loves family. If you look at the scriptures, there is something about family. There's something about families and inheritance that God loves. You know, there's so many people, if you saw the, the, the first clip of our birth rate in the West, one child, but that child's on crack or that child's out there doing something crazy. You can't even leave anything to that child. So you can't even leave an inheritance to your children. Our children are not in, in the word of God, not in the thing. I mean, we need to have children. Hmm? Because trust me, one of them going to have a little issue. It's all through the Bible. Epsilon was definitely one of David's sons. <laughs> huh? But so was Solomon. So at some point, having children, what God mandated, it's a great blessing. But it's nothing to sacrifice. When we abort, it's always a little girl. It's always a little boy. It's always family. Somebody say family. And when we try to change what something is to make it more palatable, we're lying to ourselves. Huh? The next thing you see in Psalms 106 that parallels to abortion is their blood is innocent. Psalms calls uh, the sacrifice of innocent, calls it the sacrifice of innocent blood. Look at verse 38. It says, they poured out innocent blood, the blood of their sons and their daughters. They poured out innocent blood, the blood, but the blood of their sons and and daughters. Among all the people in the earth, you got to believe that babies are innocent. Huh? You got to believe that babies are innocent. They don't deserve to be mistreated. We talked about Matthew 18. God said it's better for you to tie a millstone around your own neck 
and just hurl yourself on into the sea than to mess with one of these little ones. What part of that do we not understand? How do you think God really feels about that? God himself has an absolute right to give life, and God himself has an absolute right to take it. And we can be sure that if he takes a little one, he deals with it according to what they could know. You know, understand this. I believe that a young child, innocent child, is saved. If the Bible says you have to have A conscience toward God. A baby cannot have a conscience toward God. So all of this rushing and throwing water on a baby's head and calling them baptizing, that means nothing. The scripture says that you must have a conscience toward God. That baby's got a conscience toward a couple of things. Milk. <laughs> sleep. And a diaper change. They got to concentrate on that because they will show give you the business when you don't take care of that business. Am, am I right about it? They ain't got to concentrate about anything else. So we have no right to take their lives. In relation to us, they're innocent. And we're guilty if we take their life. So I want to say this, that The third thing that that psalm tells us, the blood is innocent. And we've got to give an account. I don't think we understand it. I don't think we understand, as we talked about on Sunday, from Genesis chapter 4 down through verse 10. Someone wrote, I looked and someone wrote me and they said, I never saw that in the Bible. I cried when I heard that God heard the blood. Heard the blood. His blood cried from the earth. So they never heard the fact and put together, well, if he could hear one man's blood, surely he can hear 60 million American babies. Who, Jesus. Come on now. Life is in the blood. And that blood is crying out, and he's hearing the cries. And the point becomes, how could you stand there and hold a baby head into the womb so it can't be birthed? Or how can you be a part of something? People always say to me, Bishop, you know, the reason why I don't want to talk to you because you always go to two things. Well, you know, it's like I didn't come to this conclusion like four years ago. You know, and, 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 and really, the only thing that really makes me mad with people is I've been this way. But my wife has known me the longest, 36 years. She known me. But I've been this way for at least 45 years. I will never, have never, will not vote for a person that's for abortion. I don't care what, what other good plan they got for me. I'm never going to vote for, have never voted for somebody that's for same-sex marriage. Ain't going to do it. It's against God's law. I don't care what a but. No, ain't no buts. There ain't no Christ and and Christ but. No, I don't want, I don't want, no, I want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Well, they don't give nothing. No, that's what the church is supposed to do, take care of the poor. Yes. Yes. Well, 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 your people, they don't, no, no, that's what the church is supposed to do. Lay hands on the sick that they might recover. If that don't work, build a hospital. <laughs> that's the church's responsibility, not the government. And so we have found ourselves 
agreeing with stuff that I can't believe preachers have agreed with this. And what we've done is, is, is set up a nation full of strong demons and strongholds. And we can never seem to cut through it. The fourth thing that Psalms 106 tells us about in the parallel with abortion is demonic. Somebody shout it's demonic. Man, it's so demonic. It's so demonic. It's so demonic. Look at 37 and 38. It says they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to who? Demons. They it listen, it didn't say they sacrificed them uh, 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 that, that another child would live. Didn't sacrifice. They sacrificed them to demons. Every sacrifice is to a deity. And guess what we don't have to do? We ain't got to sacrifice nothing but praise. We got to bring sacrifice of praise. Huh? We've got to consecrate our lives, but bring a sacrifice of praise. Honor God. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Let him understand we appreciate his sacrifice, his work on the cross. He did it for us. This last parallel, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They poured out innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. They sacrificed them to the idols of Canaan. I, I, I need you to see something here. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, Paul deals with, the, uh, with this connection between idols and demons. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, Paul deals with this connection between idols and demons. What do I imply then? that food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything. Food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything. No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. They offer to demons and not to God. I don't want you all participating with demons. I don't want you. We, oh, I didn't know. Well, well, just because you did not know the cliff was there does not mean that you are not subject to the law of gravity. Ignorance has nothing to do with it. See, the blindness of so many of this moral atrocity has many sources. But it's finally traced to the, to the seductive ways and the evil uh, pursuits, really, and advances of Satan. Satan is a wicked creature. He's wicked. Jesus said this. He was a murderer from the beginning. From the very beginning, he was a murderer. Now he got us Christians participating in his murder. Yeah, that's okay. You don't know what she's going through. That You know, we're going to support her in this. No! He 
he was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there's no truth in him, John 8 and 44. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature for he is a liar and he's the father of lies. I think that's right. Which means that the sacrifices of our sons and daughters today is in the very true and profound sense a sacrifice to demons. Now, we can't on one hand come in here, lift up our hands and, and worship the God of our salvation and offer him a sacrifice of our praise, but yet offer sacrifice to demons. See, the religious part of paganism may have fallen away really somewhat in the Western world. But we, we, we got some people from around here that, from around these parts right here, in today's Bible study, there's only a couple people here from America, directly. <laughs> huh? The folks that ain't from here outnumber us today. And think about it. They can tell you stories about the witch doctor. They know where the, come on now, we know, you know, we, we know where Miss Cleo used to live. The palm readers. Yeah, she ain't from Jamaica. Oh, she from America? She, 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 she playing on y'all. She fake. She try. She trying to. She trying to use y'all's uh, demon, demonic glory, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try to use the Jamaican de demonic glory. He said, "Hold up now, hold up now." <laughs> yeah. Why? Why would she want to be from there? Would she think her juice is gonna be better from there? I don't know. Just saying. Just saying. But just saying. Palm readers, soothsayers. Come on now, huh? Huh? Mind readers, come on now. The seance people, come on. You know, uh, I'm just telling you, the devil does it in that way. And today he does it in a slick way, you know, in this secular world. Because you know what? He's not going to get laughed at. He's making everything woke. See, if I can make it woke, I can, you know, I'm making... You know, I'm making the educated folk talk like me, huh? Educated people. Listen to all these people from Ivy League educations. You listen to them talk, huh? I listen to Janice Yellen. She is the uh, Treasury Secretary, the lady that's over Treasury or whatever she is. Um, man, you should have heard her. Man. The economy is being affected and will be affected because women don't have a chance to have an abortion. What's I got to do with my money? What they got to do with my money? These are, these are intelligent people, quote, unquote, with all of these degrees. I mean, it's, it's it, it, what I'm telling you. But if I can make it popular, being dumb, just so long, I've got the I've got what is called the media thinks I've got gravitas, and the media thinks I'm so eloquent of speech. You know, I mean, just for instance, here we are right now. Everybody's celebrating because in the history of America, we got the first black uh, press secretary. And we got the first openly gay secretary, press secretary. And we got the first uh, openly out LBGDQ plus secretary, press secretary. I don't care. I don't need to see your picture to see if you can do the job. I want to see what your qualifications are. And matter of fact, I saw her on a couple of occasions. She's not that good. And you're going to find, and everybody going, you're not going to be able to talk about it because she's a part of a category. But, 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 but her job now has to do. See, we pick Supreme Court justices because they're black and female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we, yeah, they don't know they're female, a black and woman, but but they get picked for that. And then and then you pick this woman because she's black and homosexual. But watch this now. 
if you come after her, guess what they're going to say? You came after me because, because, I'm, because I'm black. Or you came at me because I'm gay. See, when black don't work, you go to gay. Now, first you go gay or you go, go homosexual. But the, the Trump card is still black. You know, they still, it's almost getting ready to lose their luxury. It's getting ready to go to transgender, you know. And so, you know, you see, look at the cabinet. They got a transgender. They got this. They, got, they went to alphabet school. That's why the economy is the way it is. That's why the nation is the way it is. They didn't go for competence. They went to fill a square. And so if, if in this context, the devil's dealing in wokeness to make you agree with all of this stuff. You're not woke, huh, if you don't understand that a woman's got a right to choose, huh? You're not woke. You use some kind of way of bigot if you believe this scripture. And we got preachers that don't want to be called bigots. We got preachers that don't want to be called, we want to only be called what? We, 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 we don't want to, we don't want to do that. Abortion is nothing more. You can't paint it any other way. It's the sacrificing of our sons and daughters to demons. It's sacrificing our sons and our daughters to demons. And I pray that someday we'll see it just for what it is. And I pray that it's not too late. And I pray We'll be amazed that it could have endured so long. And so long we have been enslaved. Our minds have been trapped. And we believe a lie. It's only a fetus. Your son and your daughter. Hmm? Our mothers and grandmothers are filling nursing homes. When we came up, there were no nursing homes because there was enough sons and enough daughters. I don't think you can find a nursing home in Africa anywhere because they got enough kids. Huh? Time you got 10 kids, somebody going to take care of mama. Somebody going to take care of daddy. Am I, huh? They got nursing homes in Sri Lanka? Or do, they, mom, you, children take care of mom and daddy. There is a expectation of it. But what they're trying to do is change the culture. And see, if I can change the culture, huh? I can change the world. And the church should be upstream pouring down into the culture but we're downstream from culture. That's why we're aborting our children. We should be salt and light. But we're asking the devil for a match. We're standing in the dark asking the devil for a match. You got a light? <laughs> and we're downwind, going to get burned up. I... It's amazing. It's, it, it, that's the picture. We're sitting here in the dark, and we're supposed to be light. But we don't turn it on because the scripture said, let your light. That means that you can do something about it shining. <laughs> it said, let your light. Then say, borrow the light. Huh? And that other verse that helps us to be ready, it says, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Good God, because we know not when he's coming for his church. We've been so blind. We, we've been so blind. We are so blind. So blind. The issue is very clear. There's no ambiguity. God is saying, if you do this, it's a sacrifice. 
is a sacrifice of innocent blood. Hmm? You can't you can't act like oh, I, I I did not know uh you know really you know what it was and 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 I wasn't really sure what I was doing. No, it was not only a sacrifice, it was a sacrifice of your sons and your daughters. I'm not sure, you know, what I was doing. No, it was a sacrifice of your sons and daughters of their innocent blood. And lastly, it was a sacrifice to demons. And then we've got preachers that can get out of their mouth that a baby is a demon seed. Oh, God. Man, that, that thing, that, that, that gave me the willies and made me scared. How can you be a man of God and say something like that? How can you just, who gives you the right to justify? But, but what if the thing happened, God didn't put no provisos in here? Don't you think when God writ, wrote the word, he thought about that before you, Mr. Genius? Do you know there's no circumstance? There's no proviso that God didn't think of. Come on here. God knew before the foundation of the earth that that 12-year-old would be raped. Huh? But why would you serve a God like that? Because God's ways are not like my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. I don't know what he going to do. I don't know how he going to turn somebody's life around. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know why he does what he does. But the thing we talked about in the beginning, are you bold enough to trust him in the midst of, of your crisis? You're going to be in the midst of a crisis. If you have to do this and stand, oh, man. Oh, it's hard to stand for life. It is. It's hard to stand for life because people is not woke. If we stand for life, boy, if the church don't understand, if America misses this, here we are right now. You, you can choose now. We can see it as clear as day. You can't act like it's not. You're always talking. You see, this ain't on the ballot. You always talk about it. No, I, it's always on the, ballot, on the ballot. Why would I vote for somebody who's going to head the nation that's going to sacrifice our sons and daughters to demons or allow it to happen? You want to get your hands off of that. Nations will be judged. And preacher, you shouldn't be a part of that. And every butt you give me, the church should be taking care of it. But, 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 but they don't take care of the poor. Well, let me see your checkbook. How many orphans and widows your, check, your church taking care of? Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting messy now? Oh, I'm getting messy. I'm getting messy. See, I don't see no checks going to widows, no checks going to orphans. huh? But you want to tell me, no, that's the church's job. And it's the church. See, isn't it amazing? It's like when we was kids, you know, daddy swinging and stuff like that. And I'm trying to say, well, that's Ed should have done that. I don't want to hear about what your brother should have did. I told you. You know, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. This ain't about somebody else. And God's not going to let us deflect. It was your sons and your daughters that you aborted. It was innocent blood. It was a sacrifice, and it was to demons. Don't say you did it for me. Don't put me in this, that you didn't understand what you were doing. Saints of God, abortion is wicked, and it's demonic. Listen, somebody looking at this, you might even be here. You've participated in an abortion. You helped somebody in an abortion. You've had an abortion. This, I'm telling you, I would never, ever throw anything at you. But I'm telling you, God is merciful. He's kind. And the approach that I want to take is love. God loves you. If you're hearing me and you're seeing us, for the first time, or you come back to look and you saw that, that video and you say, I did that. Listen, you've blocked it out of your mind. It's been a long time ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago. But you have to give an account. And I pray that God has mercy. 
I'm here to stand with you and those of you who are here, that every head bowed, every eye closed. If you have been through this, know that God will forgive you. He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. You may have been young. You may have been ignorant. But you sacrificed your son, your daughter, to demons. Oh, God, have mercy, I pray. Oh, God, have mercy on each and every one of us. Father, if we participated in this nasty deed, I pray, God, this is the year of supernatural turnaround. Father, this is the year of restoration. Restore our souls, our minds. God, I pray by the spirit of the living God that you would bless those that are listening right now. That woman that has gone through this thing, forgive her, I pray. God, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you let her know that you do love her, that you love her, and there's nothing she can do about that. But, Father, she's got to forgive herself as she seeks forgiveness. Father, she may have tried to forget about it, bury it, but, God, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, there's some man that's listening to me, some brother, some father, some friend. Perhaps you participated in the sacrificing of a son and a daughter. I pray, God, for forgiveness. I pray, God, that they would come to an altar and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Wash me, cleanse me, purify me, cleanse me. God, I see now how wrong that was and is. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a nation that is going around and going on the wrong track. We're losing our natural mind because this is an altar here. This is a worship place for them. It's the altar of sacrificing of sons and daughters. God, I pray that you would open up their eyes. Lord, let Christians take this moment to preach a gospel that is bold, that is sincere, that is true and loving, that people might come to ask, who is this lamb that was already sacrificed for the sins of the world? Father, we just thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, come on, let's give God glory in here. Glory to your name. Uh, uh, some of you, I want to thank God for our listening audience. And I want to say before uh, they go, uh, we thank God for your online giving. It really is helping in a big way uh, as many have not come back to church, but you're still tuning in and, you know, uh, sowing seed. I thank you so much. It's helping with our Ukraine mission. It's helping uh, with our Sri Lanka uh, uh, work that we're doing. Uh, we thank you. It's happening with our India work that we're doing. Thank you so much. And those that contacted me this week that wanted to give uh, to Sri uh, to uh, Ukraine, we appreciate it. But we really need your prayers, not your money right now for Sri Lanka. Uh, it's kind of almost don't want, I'm not sure how to send it. When you send money now, what will happen uh, and how, who's monitoring the money now as things are going, as inflation and stagflation is hitting and things are up 50, 60, 70 percent. There's not really a central government in place. We just need to continue to pray for Sri Lanka that she might uh, make a big turn here quickly within the next few days ahead and get the International Monetary Fund, I hope, in there to get them on a footing to be able to pay some debt, generate enough funds uh, through the kind of taxation they're going to have to do with their businesses or whatever they need to do to generate funds. I pray that corporations don't leave, um, that people will be feeling safe because if people don't come, it's a tourist island, and when tourists don't come, they don't make money. Um, so many of you all from Caribbean understand that. Nobody comes to Jamaica. They have no money, you know, and if People feel like they're going to get hit upside the head on every corner. They're going to quit coming or they'll stay on the ship. 
and just wave at y'all on the island or something. Y'all laughing, but that's the truth right there. <laughs> Ain't going down there. Amen. And then people die and that sort of thing. Commerce has got to happen. So we want to pray for Sri Lanka for that. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Uh, giving time, anybody want to give? Anybody wants to give, you can, can do so. Uh, again, I thank you all so much. I pray it was a blessing. With the two people that were a little late, we started uh, a bit early. Who's that out there in the foyer? I don't know. It must be Adolphus. But yeah, it is Adolphus. That's his profile. Yeah. But uh, play those two videos for him in the same order. Yep. You can stop it. Yep. Thank you so much.